Okay, and we are live and hello, hello everybody. I'm Shaquanda and I'm so glad that you are joining me today. You guys know me from my YouTube channel, Discovering Your Worth. And today um, I would like to introduce to everybody, I have Shirley Latour with us. She is a long, 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 long time acquaintance of mine. I have known her since, oh my God, since I think we both was wet behind the ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that part. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm so excited to have her with us today um, because I know she is going to share some valuable information um, with us. And so... I'm just excited to have her here. So Shirley, how are you doing? Wonderful. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me onto your platform to talk candidly with you today. Yeah. I haven't seen your face in a many number of years. I know, but, right? <laughs> <laughs> but so glad to, um, you know, sometimes we can meet people and they're just for a time and season. You'll never talk to them again. But you know, good people you can always link it up with. Um, at a later time and in the proper time and space. So I'm just so grateful for um, even the phone call that you you called me up. And so thank you for allowing me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And just like you're saying, you know, it's amazing how, you know, life will bring you right back around, you know, to people when you're in that space. And mm -hmm. so, you know, like I was just sharing, you know, I've just started my YouTube channel and basically the YouTube channel is encouraging people to discover their work. And so uh, what I have noticed, um, you know, just observing, you know, people in life is that a lot of people are clueless about their worth. Um, and, you know, and some folks are just complacent. Some people just don't want to put the work in, you know, mm -hmm. to discover who they are, which is fine. And so um, I don't know if I had shared this with you um, before, but, you know, um, previously I, I used to hold like events. Um, the events was called Central City and mm -hmm. I would invite um, business owners, entrepreneurs, professionals. Um, they would come out and they would, um, pretty much, you know, let the community know what their services are, uh, what their products are. And, you know, as I spoke to them, they didn't get there overnight. You know, they had to go through stuff um, in order for them to know what their talents were um, so that they can share it to, with other people. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and that's what I pretty much want to try to, you know, get over to others is that, you know, we have to recognize our why, you know, because our why will pretty much let us know um, who we are, you know. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, um, like I said, I'm so glad that you are joining us today and I'm so excited for you to share with us what you're doing. And um, I have to say, I, I did go back and, you know, I saw your testimony. And oh my gosh, I was so, it blessed me so much because I, like I say, me and you go way back and, you know. Mm -hmm. And you, you knew me knew during me, that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, when we first met, you know, we were trying to, you know, get our feet on a good solid ground. So, mm -hmm. um, so tell us what is your line of business and what you're doing? Well, um, as you can see behind me, I, I, my first profession was a registered nurse. I'm still a registered nurse, but I retired from the military. And so when I retired from the military, I kind of, I'm not going to say I set it down, but God had another avenue for me to, to be a nurse in different areas. So I still volunteer um, as a registered nurse once or twice a month at a clinic. But that is, you know, just something I do to give back to the community and helping others. Um, I am now a publisher. Um, I publish other people's books along with my own, of course, bringing people together, um, sharing their stories, getting them out of the rut, 
um, writing was so freeing for me. And I never thought that I would be doing this at all. I was, I was trained in the profession of helping other people in the nursing field. I had no idea that I would be helping people through the releasing of their stories and dealing with issues. And I found myself counseling and doing all kinds of things. Let folks cry, crying out in my living room on the floor, um, ministry, right? Right. Because all of this ministry. Yes. Um, and then simultaneously with the, um, the publishing company also came Prison Break that's behind me. Prison Break with Shirley and Shonda, it is a radio show and it is, um, our tagline is called breaking down walls, mind, body, and spirit. Cause can I tell you, I was in prison in my mind. And so God had to break me out of it so I could help break other folks free. So, um, that's a little bit what I, um, of what I do. I also, you know, I have a CPR business and just different little things. I, I volunteer with different organizations, um, and help them along the way. And so I, I think my overall ministry is just the ministry of helps basically it is the ministry of helps. And so wherever I can find my hands to help somebody along the way, I will and whatever um, way that the Lord gives it to me at that time. So. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Wow. Let me tell you, like I was saying folks, um, when I met Shirley, um, we both, um, we were starting off at ground one, trying discovering our worth, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and so now that I'm hearing her story, um, she has her own publishing company. She um, has her CPR business. Um, she has a radio show um, called Prison Break with Shirley and Shonda. Mm -hmm. And you have a book, right? You have yes, book? I have. I have several books. You have several um, books. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So... Um, I'll tell you just a little bit about them is really how God brought me to pretty much everything. Oh, and I have a nonprofit organization. It's called Out of the Shadows Outreach Ministry. Okay. That was birth. That was birth well before these were. So um, sometimes God sets you up. I mean, all, a lot of times he sets you up, right? <laughs> we don't right. understand how or why we, we, how or why we're going through the things that we're going through, but it really is for a divine purpose. So if we could yes. just hold on message to whomever is listening on the replay, just hold on. Your change is coming. There is a purpose in your pain. So on another note, let me get on back because <laughs> I could, I could talk about the goodness of God all day long. Shaquana, oh, me I'm too. telling you yes. back, back when we were um, in, in Hawaii together, I was, I was young. I was married. I, um, I didn't have a business at that time. Um, but I didn't really know all what God was, was setting out for me. And so ended up going through a divorce. The divorce process happened in uh, 2017, same year I retired from the military, same year my son graduated, my firstborn son graduated from high school and went to college. Three significant, three significant events all in one year, right. all pretty much within months of one another. So can I tell you that it was nothing but the grace of God that kept me through that? Because yeah. somebody would have been in a mental institution. Somebody might have committed suicide, but the Lord, he kept me for a purpose. So I went through some things through um, a little segment of time. Um, divorce was um, final in January of 2018. Um, I went through some things during that year. I had some, um, some guests in my home during that year. God set me up for um, some different things during that time. But at the end of that year, I heard God say that night, grace to recover. Okay. And Shaquanda, I knew what that meant. Yeah. I had been a writer since 2015 and being in other people's books. And I knew someday I wanted to, um, to write a book. I just didn't know when it was going to happen. 2016, I actually wrote in a book. It was called from fear to freedom. Oh, I was running from that one for real, because okay. I knew God was calling me okay. to, um, to break free of the things that I was going through. Um, I had to address them, but I was afraid to address them. So he okay. brought a book cover flashed across Facebook on me. Right. I looked at it. I said, "Uh, uh, no, no, God, nope." So I ignored it. Oh, yes. <laughs> a month later, it flashed on my screen again. This had never happened to me before. But God will get your attention wherever you are, won't He? 
Yes, he will. Yes, he so, will. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I ended up writing in that book and I knew someday I would end up writing my own book again. I didn't know when it was going to be. I was still married at this time. Right. But I was having to continue to press through the steps. That's where Out of the Shadows um, event, um, Out of the Shadows Outreach Ministry came that same year, 2016. So went through some different things. At the end of 2018, he said grace to recover. I knew exactly what he meant. Why? Because I didn't have no sad pity party story about, oh, my husband left me and this, that, and the other. No, I'm great. I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm okay. You know, God has been the one that's kept me. I'm okay. And I, and I wasn't bitter or none of that kind of stuff, right? And I would have complete strangers, women, Shaquanda, come up to me and just start talking about they, they, they ex-husbands and how, how, are, how are they happy and how did they move on and I'm so miserable, this, that, and the other. And I'm looking at these women like, wow, yeah. But you still stuck. Yeah, uh-huh. It's you that's miserable. Come on. Come and he done gone on with his life. Come on. Baby, pick yourself up. Find out who you are. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get you some healing and move on. Let him be. Yeah. Because yeah. there is greater out there. Yeah. And so when all of that stuff started happening, I was like, okay, God, I don't know what this is. So when he said grace to recover again, I knew what that's what that meant. I also knew that it was not for me to write alone. I was to bring other women along the way to yeah. tell their different stories of their of their um, recovery. Because we don't we we always hear people complaining about stuff, right? But what's the solution to it? Exactly. If you don't have nothing good to say, like you know, like the old folks used to say, don't say nothing at all. <laughs> right. So my purpose right. is, yes, we went through some things. Yes, we had some pain. Yes, we had some struggles. However, what are the good things you got out of it? How did you overcome? Oh, come on, come what on. advice can you give somebody else so that they oh. can overcome too? Some oh. people are never going to the church house, but guess what? You are the ministry. You are the person that got sent to them. That's what you going to give them? That's and so right. Grace to Recover, um, one, honestly, I, I, I never expected God to blow my socks off like this. But when I, I posted it on Facebook, one post, um, who's ever, what woman has ever, what, what have you ever wanted to um, write a chapter in a book? You didn't want to write your own story. I had 69 replies from that one post. Wow. 69 people can't go in that one book. Mm -hmm. of telling mm -hmm. a whole story or so or a chapter of a story so out of that birth um, I had enough for two volumes and at the time um, I met, had another title it was called God of a Second Chance so I had um, two volumes of Grace to Recover and the first one was called Grace to Recover How to Divorce Hurt Addiction and Overcome Trials with the Power of a Loving God the second one was Grace to Recover How to Break Free of the Secret Fear and Loss Holding You Captive with the Power of a Loving God Oh. These two books, Shonda, I'm telling you, God brought the perfect mix of women together wow. um, to write in each of these stories. And when I read them, I knew where to piece them together. So mm -hmm. the, the, the books are broken down into different segments of people recovering from different things. Um, I never expected to write about what I, what I wrote about in either of these books, but God was dealing with me even in the writing because there was some still some hurt and some pain still buried within that I didn't know was there that I couldn't get out without having to do this come on so god was breaking me free as i was helping to break other people free come on come on but you know what oh my gosh um shirley oh my okay didn't i tell y'all she is going to give us some valuable information here you know and when i say valuable information you know when you can actually hear it from somebody that has been through it that's valuable. You know, when you can actually sit there and just listen to someone that has, that's going through what you're going through and has made it, that's valuable. And so, yeah, this is, this is what we're talking about. And you know, so something, Shirley, you said something that God will try to get your attention. Yes, he will. By any means necessary. By any means necessary. <laughs> God, I mean, he is just like, I'm, I'm trying to show you. I'm trying to get you through it. I'm trying to, you know, but you're not listening. You're not listening. You keep ignoring me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and God will, he will, just like you say, by any means necessary, God will try to get your attention. 
And the problem is what I have noticed. And, you know, I'm guilty because, you know, just like you were saying, you know, you can't complain, you know, because when we get put in situations, you know, we can't complain, you know, you're going to have roadblocks, you're going to have challenges, mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be offenses, you know, all of that stuff mm -hmm. is going to come mm -hmm. to you. But the question is, like you said, what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. How are you going to solve the problem? Mm -hmm. And sitting there complaining is not going to help you solve the problem. So, no, you know, we're talking about discovering your worth. And mm -hmm. let me tell you something, Sherry. I um, looked at your testimony. Um, and the book that you referenced was The um, Grace to Recover. Mm -hmm. And so, and in that, um, your testimony, um, I think you were hosting a radio show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were hosting a radio show and you were talking about, um, there was one segment um, in your conversation, you were talking about um, how you felt you couldn't show what you were going through. Mm -hmm. You know, because you were a leader in the church, mm -hmm. you know, because you were an officer in the, mm -hmm. in the army, in the military, mm -hmm. um, and you were a business owner. So, you know, you had all of these hats that you were wearing. Right. Meanwhile, you were broken, but yeah. you couldn't show it. Mm -hmm. And so, look, look, remind me which which volume that is, one, two, or three, because honestly, I write it and, and forget it. When it's well, out, it's out. <laughs> yeah, it was volume one. Yeah, you were okay. referencing that book. Yeah, volume one. Okay. And so I want you to share with us because what you said in that segment was so powerful. Um, the gentleman had asked you, um, why did you feel comfortable in wearing, mm -hmm. you know, that mask? Why did you feel comfortable in wearing that mask? And that, what you had said, that was so powerful for, to me. I was like, oh, my God. I know if that blessed me, you know, if you can, if you can share that, because I know that can bless somebody else. Well, honestly, I don't really remember the segment, but I do somewhat remember the conversation um, a little bit. And I don't remember what my reply was then, but a lot of that was fear. It was fear of stepping into who God had called me to be. Oh. I knew the calling of God was on my life for a long time, but I was not validated in that thing, you know. And so um, wearing all these hats and trying to keep other people's name good, so to speak, right? Yeah. Because I don't, I don't want my name in the paper. I don't, I don't, we don't need to, you know, have the wrong type of publicity. So it was easier for me just to keep on moving to make it through those things and so but I was really hurting myself I really really was I was really hurting myself I could have been delivered from that from so much earlier than what I was but honestly though I'm okay with it happening the way it did why because now I can teach and I can train and I can sh really show the true love of God to people why I've been in that same place right so I can come and I can sympathize with you I can sit there with you you know and, and I can give you um something that's authentic yeah right I can give you something that you can hold on to but again it was fear I had so much going on in my life you don't even know and it's on a different level when you're a leadership in leadership position in church right. you can't talk to everybody right and those you choose to talk to, if they don't keep your stuff in confidence or you, they tell you something sideways, because it happened to me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it further pushes you back <laughs> into a corner. Like, I'm not talking to nobody. Like, uh -huh. I, I never felt like I was um, in the same clique, per se, as other yeah. people. I always felt different, right? Right, yes. And I wasn't comfortable in my own skin back then. I'm certainly comfortable now. Right. But, Right. Um, yeah. I wasn't comfortable with who I was. I didn't get that outlet. I didn't have people around me at a certain time because, yes, he, he God drew me away from everybody I can use as, as a crutch because he wanted me to lean on him. That's right. That's right. Come on. He will do it. He will put you in a uncomfortable situation. Yes. You know, and a lot of times, you know, what do we say when God 
put us in an uncomfortable situation. Lord, why me? <laughs> mm-hmm. Lord, why me? But you yeah. know, just like we were saying, is that God, in order for him to get to, in order for God to get our attention, he has to put us in uncomfortable situation. Absolutely. I mean, we see that throughout life. Mm-hmm. You know, with other people, other successful people, other people mm-hmm. that has made it, you know, they didn't make it because they sat, you know, they sat there and were and was complaining. You know, they kept moving. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and so yeah, they didn't sit there and have a pity party, but you know, so Shirley, you have overcome a divorce in the midst After of 16 years, over 16 years. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you have two beautiful children and, you know, in the midst of all of that, you know, and like I said, and, I, and I'm telling you all when, when Shirley and I first met, you know, yeah, we were we were just starting out. We didn't know who we were, you know. And so to hear her story today is such a testimony um, because I know she has come a long way. Because like I say, me and, me and her, I, I knew her from, from years ago. And when did so, you get to, when, I'm sorry for interrupting, but when did you get to Hawaii and when did you leave? So we can, because I don't even remember. The time has just gone by. Everything's in warp speed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was in Hawaii back in 1999. And when did you leave? I left in 2006. Okay, so we did have quite a bit of overlap. I was there from 2001 to 2008. Uh-huh. So yeah, so you you yeah. left before me, but we yeah. had a five what a five year. Yes. overlap of time and oh, yeah. I, I was a clueless woman I was yeah. a clueless mama I didn't I, know nothing <laughs> you know let me tell you you we all have this journey you know what and like I you know I'm all with life gets to me well for me it gets sweeter and sweeter absolutely even absolutely though, you know I have faced many things and I have been uh, disappointed a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've just learned, you, you know, and, and, and that's, you know, life is just so wonderful. It's, it it is, is. So wonderful. And, you know, we have to go through the process. Absolutely. We got to shed those masks. Oh, yes. my goodness. We have to go through the process. You know, and you know, just like you were saying, you know, in your in your testimony, you know, we want to wear these masks, mm-hmm. and you know, we want to pretend like, and you know, to be honest, I I don't think I have ever pretended. I think you know, I <laughs> I, I think I have always been open about if I like something or dislike something. Is mm-hmm. it was just always on my face. I I just couldn't hide it. It mm-hmm. was, that's how it was and so if I was having a good day you knew I was having a good day if I was having a bad day you knew I was having a bad day I, I just that's just how I am mm-hmm. and so um but yeah you know you know a lot of times you know we, we see people where they have to wear they they think they have to wear these masks meanwhile they're hurting inside Mm-hmm. And you know, and, and the thing, the thing about that is that, like, so you're walking around pretending like everything is okay for people that don't even mm-hmm. matter in your life. Right, right. We we do uphold people to much higher standard standard than what we should. Yeah. We we uh, we a lot of times put them over God. Yes. Um, anything we put before God, God will take away. Monique, tr- tr- ask me wait a minute, like say that. Wait a minute, say that one more time. Sure. Say anything that. you put before God or above God, He will take away. Okay. Ask me how I know. Okay, come on. 
people take it away. But you know what? Even in this last three, four years, I have discovered just how much my father in heaven loves Shirley. He moves heaven and earth for me. Do you hear me? And sometimes people will put stumbling blocks in your way on purpose. It's not the people. It's the demons that see the calling on your life. That's right. And they are sick. Say say that one more time. Say that one more time. Say that. It's come on. They they put the stumbling blocks there because of what? The calling on your life, the anointing on your life, the Uh demons, Mm -hmm. they can see it. Yeah. And they are there Mm. in the form of a person. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, somebody that you really care about hidden. Come on. And they and they gonna do their thing until. We learn our worth until mm-hmm. we learn to stop fighting with with um with human hands. When mm-hmm. we start l- learning to fight and put our whole armor of God on every single day and fight with the weapons that He gave us that's not carnal, then we can win. Mm-hmm. I learned my worth, and I know that I don't have to lift a finger to nobody. I ain't got to cuss nobody out. Mm-hmm. I ain't got to do nothing. Just that's be right. <laughs> Shirley. That's it. And God gonna get them. My Ooh. angels are dispatched on my behalf. Yeah. He told me I can speak and things will just happen. Come right? On. We all got that power when we come That's into right. that realization of who we are in Christ. You see, That's you got me on another level right now. I'm trying to calm down. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. God is good. Go ahead. God, is good. God is, he is he is so merciful. He is so kind that he will reach way down mm-hmm. into your existence. Yeah. You might be on drugs. You might be on alcohol. You might be womanizing, or they they ain't got gave it a term for the women, the women who be running around, right? Or or um, you may be giving yourself to all these type of people because you don't understand your worth. You don't understand who God made you to be. But guess what? You are no less valuable. Mm. Than the birds that he feed every day. You are no less valuable than that grass that's outside. All of this is written in the Ooh. word, right? But we are so much more valuable that he will check, he will turn over heaven and hell. He will leave those 99 sheep to come back for you, yes, son will. or daughter. Will you receive him? I just feel mm. like somebody is going to re is going to listen to this Zoom call and they're gonna give their life to Christ. Yes. It's not about perfection, beloved, mm. because I was stuck in that for so long. It is mm. not about perfection come on it is about surrendering and just knowing Mm. that we cannot do nothing not worthwhile we can't do nothing without christ come on so when you give your heart and your mind to him on today he is really able to heal he's really able to save he is really able to deliver i am a living testimony of just the grace of god and i give him all praise glory and honor for the things that he has brought me through and like you said it bring me to tears to know how much god above how much my abba father he loves me he walked me through so many things when i was willing to put shirley aside Come when on. I was willing come on, come not to on. follow my own will, but follow God's will for my life. And so mm-hmm. now I say, not my will, but God, your will be done. If Jesus had to do with a sovereign one who never sinned, come who on. died on the cross for our sins, if he had to say, not my will, but Father, yours be done. That's right. Who better are we? He was our ultimate living example. I told you um, today that Shirley Latour was gonna give us some valuable information, something that we could take with us and use it and apply it with, and, you know, with our everyday life. You know, this is what life is all about. Life is about you discovering your worth. And the only way you're going to discover your worth is that you you are going to have to learn who God is in your life. Mm -hmm. Just like what Shirley said, you know, it's not our will, it's his will. Mm -hmm. He has so much he wants to give his children. Yeah. But you got to be willing to receive it and you got to put the work in too. Come on. Come on. Because some people waiting on a miracle. Come on. And you never going to get it. 
Come on. Because you didn't do your part. Come on. You, and, if, and if you see gave them, them talent. And if you want a miracle, you still got to do something. You still got to do something. You, still you cannot to... take the gifts and the talents that the Lord has given you and bury them. <laughs> you cannot do it. And I realized God gave me many talents. How dare I sit on them? And I did that for a long time. I stopped singing for a few years. Remember when I was on the, the choir and the praise team back then? Oh, yeah. I stopped singing. Flat out wouldn't sing a note, wouldn't do nothing. Do you hear me? For a few years, I was so mm. broken. I would not open my mouth. Mm. Wow. But even Satan knows what your gift and what your calling is. So he's going to use everything he can against you in yeah. that gift and that yeah. calling that you have. But when I realized that the power was in my mouth, my voice and I began to speak again I began to sing again and God began to turn things around and I could begin to be able to see demons trembling I look over yeah that thing so you're buried until you want to be alive again you're All right. ready to come to the service until you're ready to live again God is still there he's still waiting on you but I realized that all the things that I had gone through it was for an appointed time and season and that's right now when the church doors are closed yes that's right that's right that's right. people need jesus regardless that's right that's right so he gives us the platform wherever we are he he gives us platform yeah. what are you gonna do make sure you use it for his glory that's right that's right oh my gosh oh my gosh i tell you shirley um i can go on and on talking with you about the goodness of the Lord. <laughs> you know, like I was telling you all, you know, I knew Shirley back when she was quiet, mm -hmm. very meek. Very and, reserved. Yeah, so I, I knew her and, and today just sitting here looking at her, I mean, even her appearance, everything has changed. She is glowing now. Oh my gosh. I mean, she is really a living testimony. I mean, from coming from being quiet, being reserved, um, going through a divorce, you know, raising your children um, in the midst of the storm, you know, from going through all of that. Let, I want to ask you one last question. Mm -hmm. So what happened, going through all of that, mm -hmm. what happened that inspired you to say, enough is enough? Hmm. Can I tell you one day I was in the house and of course I've been going through a whole lot of things and I, I wasn't understanding, God, why is all of this happening to me? I don't understand. I'm trying to do the best I can by you from what I knew at that, at that time, right? I'm trying to do all that I can to serve you, to please you, all of this stuff. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. You know what the Holy Spirit spoke to me? And it wasn't in, even in the same conversation. But he spoke to me audibly and said, does he love you like Christ loved the church? Okay. Oh, come on. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I can immediately say no. Okay. That is when the light bulb came on. Mm. And the last part of that saying gave himself for it, right? That's right. I knew the answer mm. to that. That's why it's so imperative that we get in our word mm -hmm. and we read it. That's right. Because it will come back to us yes. at an appointed time. Yes. So when I when he spoke that to me and I was able to answer that question, no, I knew. What are you going to do? This ain't got nothing to do with him. What are you going to do mm -hmm. to make sure that you are lined up, first of all, with the word of God and keep on moving? And I believe that's right around the same time as Out of the Shadows happened. And that was in 2016. Now, mind you, I already told y'all the divorce didn't happen until um, the proceedings didn't start until August 2017. Right? Mm -hmm. So it took a whole nother year. So that's another message. Just because you got a word from the Lord, don't mean that it's going to come to pass right then. Come on. You need to hold on. Come on. Ooh. And wait until your change come. Do it the way the Lord said do it. Because I wanted to I wanted to initiate a divorce long before that. Okay. In 2016. But he sent somebody to, 
to tell me that was not his will for me to do that. Mm -hmm. He had to come back and do it the next year. Mm. But it was not for me to walk away. Mm. You stay put, daughter. You do what I told you to do. And don't worry about nothing else. Mm. That's it. Mm. We too busy worried about what other folks are doing. Yes. Mind your business. That, do what you're supposed to do. Come on. Everything else going to work itself out. That's what right. Matthew 6 and 33 say, right? Mm-hmm. It say, it, it say um, look, and of course, my tongue get twisted when sometimes I'm on, but it's okay. <laughs> Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added onto you. That is when scriptures really began to come alive for me. That's right. Because it's living word, but it ain't living word to us when we ain't obeying and doing what it say, right? Okay. That's when that scripture came alive to me. Wow. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. And Come he on. do mean everything. Come on. Put him first and he going to work out the rest. Mm, mm, mm. So when I began to put mm. him first, he began to work out everything else. Wow. I'm so grateful. Could not be here without him. Could wouldn't be sane without him. I know for sure. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I'll tell you. I, go ahead. One last thing, and I'm gonna get yeah, off here because yeah, I know you gotta go. But your children that ain't in your house, the ones that have been entrusted to us, they got gifts and they got callings too. I have two very special children. Come on, come on. One's an apostle. He came to me the other day. He's 22 now. He down there. He he down there bringing souls to Christ at the college. Come on. He wasn't even supposed to be going back to the campus this this um semester. He said he was going to finish out his college career at home. He's a senior now, but he has another about year and a half. God strategically sent that young man back to campus even before he could get a keys to an apartment. He is bringing souls to Christ. You hear me? Come on. So the gifts, the gifts and the callings that are, that are in the house, the devil come to attack those, right? That's right. That's right. Yes, he does. And I know my baby's got gifts too. Yes. That God has given her. Mm -hmm. And I'm just waiting for him to break out. But I know I got to have two very anointed children. Yes. So mm -hmm. sometimes you may have hell and hell and things coming up against you in one person, but he'll give you some sanity in the other. I never had to worry about my children. They ain't never been in trouble a day in their life. 22 and my daughter will, will be turning 16 next month but he gave me two gifts musical gifts they both play instruments wow. i'm so excited about these about these young folks we 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 have to recognize who's in the house that's right recognize who's in the house that's right. allow them to be who they are in christ and cultivate the gifts that are inside of them that's right and if they do something that's wrong don't you throw them away please don't throw them away that's right they need you they yes. need you. Whatever comes out, they need you. You still their mama. You still their daddy. That's right. Treat them as such. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Let me. I tell you, Shirley, I am so excited. I am so excited. And you mentioned that you are so grateful. I'm so grateful that you allow God to work the miracle that's in your life right now. I'm grateful that you allow the Lord to work his miracle in your life. Praise God. Just like I say, I, I knew you back then. You were <laughs> quiet, reserved, you know, and we hard. And now I can't you. shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Like, I'm like, and I'm looking at you now, and I'm just like, you know, you're this beautiful woman now. Thank you. And you know, your voice is anointed. I mean, who knew this was in you? Who knew this? I certainly didn't. Yeah. Who knew this was in you? So, wow. So, you know, huh, we're talking about discovering your worth. Mm -hmm. And today I'm so grateful. And I know you all are so grateful to have Shirley join us today. And so, like she mentioned, um, she is uh, uh, she has a publishing company. She has a CPR business. Uh, she has a radio show called Prison Break with Shirley and Shonda. Uh, she has a nonprofit organization out of the shadow, 
and she is an author of several books. Mm -hmm. So this is a busy woman. Mm -hmm. So Shirley, if you can just let us know how we can reach you and your products um, so that we'll be able to reach out to you. Okay, well, um, I'm having a new website built right now, but my old one is still up. So I always have the, the um, domain name, sleletepublishing.com. And then my new website is just going to be my name, shirleylatour.com, S-H-I-R-L-E-Y-L-A-T-O-U-R.com. Oh. And so everything will be um, amongst those two two websites, the different tabs and everything. You can reach me by email. It's going to be um, info at shirleylatour.com. And I, I am so... Um, so grateful for this time in this space with you, Shaquanda. I'm so, so elated that you would have me on. And I just want the gospel of Jesus Christ to go out. I want people to be healed yes. of the hurts and things that they go through. Yes. And, and to know that God, Jesus Christ, is the only answer. That's right. He is the only way that we can make it through this world on today. So, I'm, again, I'm so grateful. But, yeah, Shirley Latour. Um, on different, you know, different platforms and things, but yeah, God is good. He's good yes, all the time. Is. Yes, he is. Well, all right. Well, we are so grateful and we thank you again for joining us. And on that note, uh, I'm going to say um, goodbye and we will see you on the next go round. Thank you. Bye-bye.